Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sunmin Miller. Um, so, friends, uh, what I want to do tonight is talk about um, power of empathy as uh, as a way of knowing. So, in talking about right view, remember uh, Thich Nhat Hanh had exercise where constantly asking yourself. Uh, how do I know? How do I know this sort of you know intellectual interrogation of uh, of these stories that we are telling ourselves from moment to moment, or beliefs that we create about why people might be doing something uh, near us? <clears throat> and um, so I want to look at the way that we can use, at least in some circumstances, empathy as a way of of uh, breaking through those stories that we create. <clears throat> um, so start with a story. Um, so many years ago, uh, a uh, an estranged friend of mine, uh, whose mental health had been declining for some time, he uh, murdered another friend of mine, and this was uh, devastating in a, in our like a small close knit community. You know, you could see the way that this uh, rippled out and affected the lives of, uh, of, of hundreds of people. You know, that's not just an exaggeration. I mean, this was, yeah, it was devastating for our community. And with that many people, you know, you of course found, um, you know, these weren't like some abstract, you know, a few hundred people out there that, you know, I didn't know or something. I mean, this, we're talking about, um, you know, a few hundred people with whom I interacted on a regular basis. And, um, <clears throat> And as you imagine with that many people, there were a whole lot of ways that people found to grieve. And to, I mean, this was beyond grieving, right? This was, this was more, there's a lot more going on than loss. You know, there's uh, senses of betrayal and, you know, a, lot, a whole lot of things going on. And you'd had, uh, you know, some people or many people were very insistent upon perhaps how we should go about grieving not just individually, but as also as a community. As a community, we had to heal as well. And so you had some, you know, one faction talking about the importance of, uh, of forgiving the, the murderer. Um, other, you know, folks who had other ideas about how we should think about uh, what was going on or what were acceptable ways of talking about uh, what had happened. Um, and then people, some people who thought that they should hug me every time they see me. And there's, or things that people would say to me, I started to get really annoyed with the ways that, well, I didn't think of it as the ways that they were grieving yet, but I, really annoyed with the ways that people were uh, approaching me in my grieving, um, you know, without permission, coming up and hugging me and touching me all the time, you know, like 20 people coming up. And Anyway, I got, I was getting really annoyed and I had sense, I just want everybody to just leave me alone so that I can grieve in the way that I need, uh, need to grieve. And there in the depths of that pain, something hit me. Oh, everybody else needs to grieve in their way too, don't they? And then suddenly all those annoying things, I realized they were not things that they were doing to me. These were the expressions of the ways that they themselves needed to grieve. Um, they, they were doing the same thing that I needed to in thinking I, you know, I wanted to sort of pull back into a smaller group of people and, you know, and you know, well, whatever, just grieve the way that I, I needed to, that they were doing the same thing. And then suddenly, in that empathetic connection that happened there, I, I realized that I was the one who made annoying. It was this, I didn't think in Buddhist terms back then, but you know, this, you know, this was a story that I created was that they were being annoying. And so imagine Thich Nhat Hanh there is saying in that, that moment, how do you know? How, how do you know? Um, well, now I knew I, through that empathy, I can know that, no, I, I made annoying, uh, not them. 
this was a, it was a story I created based around myself and my own needs. And in that moment of grieving this horrible thing, I mean, you know, who's going to judge me for it, right? You know, of course, I was busy judging everybody else for how they were interacting, uh, interacting with me. Uh, but as I was creating that story about annoying, I, I, about being annoyed, I was cutting myself off from all of those other people. I was cutting myself off to the recognition of the, the pain that they were experiencing. Um, and I obscured the truth about what was going on and instead created my own, uh, my own story, um, which was I felt kind of sad because here was this, these, all these people who were open to my pain. And here I had cut, made up the story about them and, and cut myself off um, from them. Um, and how do I say this? Um, this it, so it's not like I didn't try still. So whenever now they came up to me to, you know, touch me without permission or whatever, or insist that I talk about the events in a particular way, I was no longer annoyed by it. Now it was just like, okay, yeah, you're, you're grieving the same way I am. And we grieve in different ways. And and now instead of knowing what I saw was a person in pain. Um, this doesn't mean I didn't draw boundaries. I did, uh, I still did. I knew I had my way of grieving. Um, and so I, um, you know, I sometimes made it clear to people that I just, I didn't wanna be touched anymore. <laughs> um, you know, at least by certain people outside of a certain circle of mine. And, you know, or I would stay away from certain events. So I just didn't want to deal with it. It was fine. So I drew boundaries, but it wasn't because those people were annoying anymore. It was like, oh no, I recognize my own pain now. I recognize my pain deeper than I did before. Uh, once I stripped away that story and, and there's, I, without any malice towards anyone, okay, I'm going to pull back. I'm going to create these boundaries because that's what I need. Um, and I have no ill will towards you for approaching me the way that uh, that that you did. Now through that, empathetic connection, I could see the truth of what was, was going on, or at least some approximation of it. Um, and so, you know, we, there's all sorts of ways we create the stories about our, uh, about ourselves and, um, you know, how do we, how do we break through those stories? You know, of course, we engage in maybe a regular practice of uh, uh, Zazen that creates this habit of coming back to the, the breath and shutting off thought or we have these sort of intellectual interrogations, you know, um, how do you know, how do you know, or how do I know? Um, and, uh, but, you know, empathy is, is another way, um, at least in certain circumstances, when it's something that involves your own pain and, or, or suffering, you know, you, um, by recognizing one's own suffering, make, bridging that gap into connecting with the, uh, the other person's uh, suffering, because these stories are, are things that so often can cut us off from people. What is empathy but that connection with other people? Um, and so here, empathy, and, and this is I mean, Siddharth himself, you know, taught us about uh, um, recognizing pain of oneself and another. So I'm not saying anything new here, but but empathy, but empathy is itself here another way of um, another way by which we can know, another way by which we can break through those the stories a way in which those stories just they just don't matter who cares about the story about why people are doing this or that it's just i was in pain i saw other people in pain it sucked well let's you know what can we do for each other or you know i gotta hunker down and you know but no malice you just drop the story there and and just in the recognition of our of our shared pain and be there for one another or not because sometimes you got to be there uh, for yourself first. Uh, thank you.